Hi and welcome back. Today we're going to be learning how to label lines and curves in Civil 3D. Alright, so what I have here is just kind of some simple lines and a curve in it. And uh, we're going to throw some default Civil 3D labels on it. Meaning I didn't tweak these. These are kind of just right out of the box Autodesk labels. And you'll see they're not very nice looking. And uh, we're just going to tweak them up just a little bit and it should give you some of the basics on how to tweak these things on your own. Of course, if you're looking for something in particular, please leave a comment in the section below and I will be glad to create a, create a quick video on how to create one that you're looking for. But this should give you just the basics. So let's go into this here. So let's go to lines and curves um, and we're going to go to the add lines and curves labels and click the very top one, which says the exact same thing, add line and curve labels. All right, so um, from here you'll notice we have some defaults. Now I did create one earlier as I was messing around with a few things, um, but I'm going to use just the standard Civil 3D default there um, for lines and labels. You can kind of see them all over here. So bearing and distance, pretty standard, um, and uh, distance radius delta for the curve, sure. So let's add them in real quick. Now I'm going to rapid fire, just kind of plop these in here. Um, because the cool thing about Civil 3D is, again, is it's all very dynamic. If I change one thing, it's going to reflect everywhere. So um, so obviously, there's a few things I want to change around out of the boxes. I don't like this little arrow, the line direction arrow. I think it's stupid um, and things like that. So I'm going to change a few things here. So first things first, I'm going to click on there. I'm going to go to Edit Current Selection. Now, I could copy it if I wanted to create my own. Again, it's better to start from something than nothing. Um, but again, start your own if you want, but I'm going to edit. All right, so usually you default right here to the bearings and distances here. You'll see it's created by Autodesk, not by myself. Um, and look at everything here. So um, one thing to note right in here is the plan readability. Um, so what that does is if you rotate your drawing or your view beyond a certain uh, rotational angle, it'll automatically flip the text for you so it always reads correctly. Um, so that's not something you're into. You can always turn this to false. I leave it on. I've never turned it off. There are a few companies I know that do turn it off though. All right, so right, let's get right into it. I don't like this direction arrow and it's the first thing it prompts me for. So if you look at layout here, you'll see the component name directional arrow. I don't want it. Ax it. Goodbye. Click the red X. Um, so other things in here, bearing, right? So the bearing is not only the bearing, but it's also the distance right after it. Um, so let's take a look at that. Um, now, obviously there's some key things in here. Um, but it's all pretty standard rotational text, angles, things of that nature. Um, look at the text height though, 0.15. Um, I'm going to change mine to 0.12, which will size it down a little bit. I like 0.12 times the scale. I think it looks nice. 0.15 is pretty big, so I'm going to size that down. Um, then I'm going to click on contents here. This is where kind of all the meat and potatoes of Civil 3D label is right at. Um, so there's a little button in here. They call it the lips button. Um, or you can call it the three dot button, whatever you want to do. If you give it a click though, it all does the same. Doesn't matter what it's called. All right, so let's take a look at this. So this is the most confusing part of Civil 3D sometimes, I think. Um, so first of all, you see it says grade check. It doesn't mean anything in our case here. It's not even in this label. It's just a default what it's defaulted at starting. It's dumb. So let's click the first thing. Now we're getting somewhere. This is basically the general segment direction as you can see you guys can read um but if you look here maybe you want to change things up a bit maybe you want it to be you know not spaced you want it to just be degrees minutes seconds no spaces make it really tight together and if you wanted that you'll see it's going to be a little bit different you'll see it change so we'll change that also look at the precision right now it's 0.01 seconds um so that's pretty good i'm not going to change that but if you wanted to change that precision you could now, by me changing in here, it's not done yet. Um, you have to make sure once you change it here, you click this little arrow, which I call it kicking it over to the side, and you'll see it change over here. There's something modified at least. Now, let's look at the length. So again, bearing, length. So I'm going to click on the length now, and again, you'll see three decimal places. That's a little much for me. Um, I'm going to change it to two, and again, hit the arrow over, kicking it over to the right. Also note, see that little foot symbol there? That's just text put in there. So if you want the foot symbol to be after it, you got to put the foot symbol there. Now, if it's already there, you don't want to put two because then it's inches. So we go, oops, and you don't want to do what I just did there and put a slash. 
Um, but so you can add your own text in here. So if you really wanted to be really picky and you wanted to say, it to say distance in front of it, you could do that if you really wanted to. Um, I would not do that. Um, you could also hit the enter if maybe you wanted to show below it. Um, I'm going to do that. We'll see what happens. And uh, we're going to give this guy a whirl here. So um, again, I'm going to hit OK now. I'm going to hit apply. And you'll notice, boom, it changed over here already right in the background. Um, so now you'll see that enter key I put in there. Well, maybe I don't like that enter there, right? Well, I'll just come back in here, delete the enter, hit OK, hit apply, and there it's gone now. So you can kind of see, you can kind of play around with these just a little bit. Um, also note, there's something called drag state in here. And you're going to see it on this one here when I drag them away. That So when it's dragged away from its area, what is it going to look like? Is it going to have a leader? Is it going to change text sizes? Hopefully not change text sizes, but it does happen. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make the text height change on purpose here, just so you can see that something is changing. Um, so I'm going to do 0.15. So the text is going to get bigger when I drag him away. Um, and I'm going to hit close here now. So when I click here and I drag him away, see how the text height's a bit bigger than this now? So that's at 0.15 times the scale, and this is at 0 0.125, 0 0.12 times the scale. Also works the exact same way for curves. Um, again, if you don't like the way it looks at any point in time, so you have all your curve labels in here, your boss is standing over your shoulder says, hey, that text is too big. Well, guess what? It's easy to change. Just click on it, right click, go to edit label text. Oops, sorry, wrong one. Edit label style and uh, just edit the current selection, which will be the one you're on and make sure the drag state, there it is, 0.12. Hit apply, hit OK, hit OK, and there you go, you're back down to normal. Now, why didn't the curve change? Remember, everything has its own style here. The curves have their own styles as well, and that happens to be on a different one. So if we click on that guy and we go to edit label style, and we just edit that selection. Again, drag state, we can say we want it to be 0.12, not 0.15. Hit apply, OK, hit OK, and voila, it changes. So the curves are no different than the other one. When you guys go in here and you go to edit current selection and you go to layout, remember when you're in here, pay attention to your contents. Notice there's L equals. You can see the L equals here. So L equals what? Well, L equals the general segment length. Now, if I only wanted that to be two decimal places, again, two decimal places, kick it over. All right, again, they got the radius. It's three decimal places. Two decimal places is fine with me. Kick it over. Now, notice, again, there's an R before it, and there's an L before it. So just watch out for those, and you should be fine. Um, again, as soon as I hit Apply and I hit OK here, you'll see it modify. And again, it didn't do much but change the amounts of decimal places. Now, you'll notice that I didn't see Delta under there, right? Well, when you were under there and you hit Edit Current Selection and you go to Layout, remember, you have separate components in here so check out your other component there it is right there now if you notice if I hit a little bit back here notice what's in here see this F symbol that's putting that Delta in there so if you know your core your your special shortcuts you could put that in um, so what I'm oops I'm clicking in the wrong spot there there we go edit there um, so again I don't want that to be to that many decimal places so I only want to kick it over hit OK hit OK Oops, hit apply. Okay, okay. Now you don't have to click apply all the time. That's just a funny habit I got into. So again, this is how you modify the curve and label styles basically on the fly. Honestly, if you keep modifying these things, you should put it in a template, which is a completely separate video. So again, this is Brandon from AIMCAD. Make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.